Is your Alibaba supplier a scammer? Today I'm gonna to give you seven ways to find out if that supplier is trying to scam you. Ready? What's up guys, this is Seth Kniep, Kniep It Real. It brings me joy to be here because I get to take what I'm learning, give it to you, help you make money. And guys, I know that money is not the end goal. I was thinking about this the other day. Money doesn't actually make anyone happy, but it can do things for you that build memories that last forever. Because at the end of the day, people are the most important thing in the world. Being able to hang out, build memories, and I hope, I really hope that you're able to take this and use it for your own business. So let's do this. If you're trying to build an online business, at some point you have to find products to sell. And to do that, you need a supplier. Now by finding the right suppliers, we have made literal, and I do not use this number lightly, millions profit selling on Amazon and Shopify and e-commerce and Instagram stores. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. If your supplier is a scammer or if they're not trustworthy, it puts you in a terrible place because your business depends on the product they're building. And if I'm your customer and I don't like the product and you get a critical review, that literally could tank that listing. So here we go. Seven ways, seven, I know how to count, I promise. Seven ways how to find out if your supplier is scamming you. Number one, if they are selling trademarked items. Now, a trademarked item, if you go to Alibaba and it says Nike and they're selling Nike shoes, come on guys, it's kind of obvious this is very trademarked. In China, it is actually considered illegal for a Chinese supplier to build an item, put a trademark logo or slogan on it, and sell it. However, when Chinese suppliers sell that to Chinese customers, that's considered kind of uh, illegal but accepted. If no one makes a big deal about it, they get away with it all the time. So in a Chinese businessman or woman's mindset, it's not as big of a deal to sell a trademarked item to a US seller as it might be to you or me who think, wait, that's crazy. I don't want to end up in jail. I don't want the FBI knocking on my door. However, over the last few years, China's realized that this is hurt the relationship with the US from a business perspective. It has actually created a stigma around sourcing from China. As a result, they become more and more strict. In fact, those Chinese suppliers get in trouble now with Chinese government if they sell trademarked items. And so if you were searching Alibaba three or four years ago, you probably saw a lot more trademarked items than you do today. So simple thing to know, if you go to a supplier in Alibaba and you're scrolling through all their products, go to the product page and just look and see, do you see any well-known brand names on there? If you do, I would run the other direction as fast as you can. <laughs> Second, if they use what's called an insecure form of payment. Scammers often refuse to use secure payment. It's an actual term in Alibaba, you'll see it. Trade assurance or PayPal, because those are all ways you can actually get your money back if you reach out and create a case against them, or if you say, hey, they're not doing what's right. However, the kinds of payments they will tend to use are Western Union, MoneyGram, or T slash T, which stands for telegraphic transfer. It's just a fancy word for doing a bank account transfer from one bank to the other. When you send the money over using a bank transfer, there's no way to get that money back unless you're using trade assurance in Alibaba. Then in that case, you can do a telegraphic transfer, but you only send 30% of that money first. And then later you get your 70% back after you did a product inspection and ensured that this product is exactly what you wanted built. Bonus tip. A lot of suppliers will try to scam you by asking you for all the money up front. Never do it. First time I did it, I did give them all the money up front just because I didn't know, and they weren't a scammer. But you do not want to spend all the money up front. You must spend a portion, they build it, then you inspect it. So whatever you do, hold on to some of the money because that gives you leverage and everybody likes leverage. Get it, get it. Ah! Ah! Number three. The third way to know if they're a scammer is if they offer ridiculously low prices. They know if you're a newbie Amazon seller, you're very easily like, oh, excited or uh, infatuated with a new surprise. Like, oh my goodness, this price is this low? This is crazy, this is too good to be true. Well, it is too good to be true, so you shouldn't be doing it. If they offer really ridiculously low prices, they're probably scamming you. So how do I know if it's ridiculously low? Well, compare it to other quotes, and then you'll know. In fact, some of them will give you a super low price, and they'll never even ship the product once they have your money. Now, again, most suppliers, the vast majority, are not scammers, but there are some out there that will take advantage of you, so you need to think about this as you build your business. Going to point number four. Number four is a really weird one. It's if they provide excessive contact information. If they constantly say, befriend me on Skype, be my friend on WeChat, 
send me this email and it's a different email. That's a sign that they may be trying to get you off the Alibaba platform, do all the business over there, and as a result, you get scammed because there's no way Alibaba can hold them accountable when they don't see any of it. So when you make that payment, you're gonna do it through Alibaba's system and use the secure methods of payment I explained. Now, for those of you guys who are just one damn, just one damn. For those of you guys who are Just One Dime members, you get far more information, all the different methods of secure payment and exactly how to do it, but you have to be a member to get that. The reason they'll provide a lot of excessive contact information is they're trying to get you off the platform. It is okay to befriend them on WeChat. In fact, we recommend that to our members. There's a time and place to do that and you can actually find out if they're a trading company or if they are selling an Amazon as well through a video chat very easily. And that tip also is for members only. But if they're only doing communication off Alibaba's platform and they're only doing business off Alibaba's platform, guys, you need to beware. Don't let them scam you. This is your money you worked hard for. You're building margin for yourself, not for the supplier. Number five, if they change their email or bank information. So here's what happens. You go to Alibaba, you send them a message, you get an email back and you're excited. Great price, they can do it. Yes, this is gonna be awesome. And then 24 hours later, you get an email from them from a different email address. Click on the from part of the email and look at the actual email address. If they do that, they're probably scamming you. Also, if they say, oh, by the way, we just changed our bank information or a different bank account, we're upgrading it. BS, run the other direction. <laughs> Six way, if they post multiple accounts on Alibaba and those accounts are not verified. Now remember, verified simply means they had someone visit the factory, they confirmed it was a legitimate business, they have a business license, Alibaba reached out to them, Alibaba confirmed this is a legitimate business. So if there's an Alibaba supplier with multiple places that they're listing their products, like multiple accounts, and if you go to the company overview, it shows you what the name is, like the main company business name, and they're not verified, that is a sign they're just trying to get a lot of exposure because they're not willing to pay for the fees to get gold supplier status. And if they don't have gold supplier status, the products don't rank, they get buried. So they're trying to cheat the system. They're trying to cut around a different direction so they can get your money. Here is a true supplier. They're actually interested in a business relationship with you. They're in this for the long term. The same thinking you should be having for your Amazon store, exactly what we teach all Just One Dime Warriors. Think long term so the business works for you. But if you're just thinking, oh, I'm gonna sell a few things and Amazon make some quick cash, I promise you it won't last long. Number seven. Okay, this last tip actually comes from Alibaba themselves. If they send you a bogus email, I'm gonna show you exactly how to identify that. Now, as you can see, Alibaba goes into this in depth, but I wanna explain it a little more in depth for you. First of all, they'll be posing as coming from someone different than the email domain. So the from section of the email address is posing as from Alibaba, but if you look really careful, it'll say something like, Alibaba ba or Alibaba. Yeah, you look closely and find out is this actually from Alibaba's domain? And if it isn't, run the other direction. Also, if they use a non-personal greeting. Typically, when you get an email through Alibaba's system, they're actually gonna use your name because when you create an account, you had to put your name in there or the name of your business. So if your business is Cool Candles, they'll say, Dear Cool Candles. If they are a scammer, they'll probably say, Dear Sir or Dear Madame. As a general rule, they're going to use your first name. Also, a fraudulent email will often say something like this. Your account has been suspended. Act now or give us your social security number or give us your bank information so we can get it reactivated. Activated. Guys, do not listen to that. Delete the email, move on, don't spend your time on it. One more, a bogus email will use scare tactics. They'll say things like, you need to take urgent action. And they'll ask you to provide sensitive information and leverage the tool of fear to get you to act now so they can take your money. Guys, if you follow these steps, this can filter out the majority of scammers in Alibaba. At the end of the day, this is your business. So you gotta do everything you can to protect it. Now, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip I think you'll appreciate. Bonus tip. Let's say you go to Amazon and you say, you know what? Candles are just an awesome product. There's so much demand. I'm gonna come out with five different scents for candles. You're excited about candles. You know you can grow a business and you're gonna come out with five cents. This thing should work. Whoa! And you are ready to ignite your Amazon business. And so you go to Alibaba and you say, hey look, I see these candles are selling really well on Amazon. They're on Alibaba. I'm gonna buy those and ship them to Amazon and sell them. Guys, if you do that, that will snuff out your business. 
don't do it. You must differentiate. In other words, find out by reading the critical reviews of your top competitors what they don't like about these candles and build yours to fix those problems. Does it take more time? Yeah. Does it take more thought? Yeah. Will it be a little more expensive? Of course. But what would you rather have? If you spend a little more time and money today and you can be a millionaire tomorrow, is it not worth it? I am so honored and proud to share that some of our members are now millionaires because we teach them how to build a legitimate, scalable, sustainable business so that they have margin to do the things they love with the people they love. And I wish that for you too. So go fire your boss.